In this next video, we are going to talk about how to apply automatic feature recognition to our part. So now that we've got our machine, our stock, and our coordinate system set up on this part, we can use the extract machinable features to find the machinable features on the part itself. Before we select extract machinable features, we need to tell the software exactly which features we want it to find. To do that, we're going to go into our SOLIDWORKS CAM tab in the Command Manager, and we're going to choose the SOLIDWORKS CAM Options. So if I click on the SOLIDWORKS CAM Options button, it's going to bring out my Options window, and I'm going to switch over into the Mill Features tab. Inside the Mill Features tab, you'll see there's a section called Extract Machinable Features, and this allows us to select the feature types that we want to apply to this part. So we're going to find holes, non-holes, which are pockets, slots, that kind of thing, boss features, a facing feature, we want to face the top of this part, part perimeter feature, and any tapered or filleted features on the, on the part as well. You'll notice as we select some of these features, you also get more options that are available. So for example, for the part perimeter, we have the option of an open pocket type or a boss type to machine this feature. So the boss type is basically just going to give us a contour tool path around the outside profile. However, the open pocket type will give us a roughing and a finishing tool path around the outside. So we're gonna choose the open pocket type and for our hole recognition options, the maximum diameter setting here is basically what's going to stop this from either being a pocket feature, a circular pocket feature, or a hole feature. The difference between those is the pocket feature is going to be a rough finish style feature, whereas a hole will be a center drill and a drilling tool path. So what I usually set my max diameter for my hole recognition feature to is the largest drill size that I have. So if my largest drill size is say 20 or 25 millimeters, I'm going to set that to that largest diameter. We also want to make sure that we create feature groups in order to group all of our similar features together. And that allows us to create one tool path for multiple different features. We'll go ahead and press the OK button. And then we can use our Extract Machinable Features button. This is going to go through and find all the machinable features on the part and list them in our feature tree. So you'll see that we have our facing feature, we have the perimeter feature, a circular pocket group. So you can see there's two different circular pockets. They are identical. So it's created a group for these. We've got a few different irregular pockets. So these triangles in the center, and then we've got the whole group as well. So there's two similar holes and those have been grouped together as well. So this is a hole versus the pocket. So this can't be drilled because it's larger than my largest drill size. You'll also notice beside each of these features, there's what's called a machining strategy. So we've got for the face feature, a finish strategy. Our perimeter feature is a rough finish strategy. We've got the circular pocket group using a rough, rough rest finish. So basically inside, if we right click on any of the features and choose parameters, you can see that there's a list of multiple different strategies available for each of these features. So if we just wanted to choose a rough finish strategy for our circular pocket group, we can change that and it's going to give us a rough mill and a contour mill. So this is our rules-based machining. And basically we're choosing different rules in order to set up different tool paths for these strategies. We can go through and create as many different strategies as we want, or we can manipulate the existing strategies that are in here. Once you've selected the strategy you wanna use, you press okay, and it's chosen that strategy in our feature tree. We can also move these features around into whatever order we want. So if we maybe want to do the perimeter cut very last, we can move that to the end of the feature tree. So we can set this up into whatever order we want to cut these in. We can also then go to the generate operation plan and that's going to go through and apply those strategies to the features. So you can see we switched over into the operation tree and now we've got all of our tool paths listed in here. We can now go and generate the tool paths and it goes through one by one and creates the tool paths. 
you'll see that they're all black and now we can highlight these tools these tool paths and it's actually going to show us a preview of what the tool path looks like so there's our face mill on the top we've got some roughing tool paths the contour to finish those up a roughing tool path on this inside pocket and then another roughing tool path. So this is a rest machining tool path using a smaller tool and only machining what's left over from the first tool path. And then we've got the contour tool path to finish that. So lots of different tool paths applied to these features, all depending on what we've set up inside those machining strategies. This allows us to teach the software how we like to machine these features. The last thing we may want to do is if we come back into our operations tree, we can sort these tool paths using our sort operations. So basically what we're going to do is either highlight the mill part setup one on the top here and choose sort operations from our SOLIDWORKS CAM tab in the command manager, or we can right click on that actual setup and choose sort operations from the right click menu. We're going to go into our sort tab and this allows us to sort by either operation type or by tool. And then you can also choose whatever you didn't choose in the first selection. So if I chose operation type first, I can then choose tool in my then by. I'm going to choose tool first. You can also reorder the tools to whatever you want these to be set to. And then we can also choose operation type and these can also be reordered. If you're reordering these features, you're just basically going to move them around. So I'm dragging them into position that I want to see these tool paths cut. I'm going to go ahead and press the apply button. You can see on the left hand side that this is how it sorted them. If you're okay with that position, you can press the okay button. If you aren't, you can undo, change these around again, and then press apply again. So we're going to press the okay button and we can kind of see how this is laid out. There is a contour tool path here that's been set to cut the inside profile of these features. That became the second tool path in my list because of the tool size. I can move this down just by dragging the tool path into position to wherever I need that to be. So now it's doing all of my roughing tool paths first, and then it comes through and does the contour tool paths afterwards.